Many, many years ago, I was a very new mom. It was a gentleman, a little co-worker that I had who was a single dad. He had two little children. He would often tell me how there was no money. money. So I would just... Michelle, yeah, your emotional resilience coach. You've asked me, how is manipulation from a normal person different to that of a narcissist? We all manipulate. We all have manipulated. We've all tried to get our own way in some way. And from children, from young, we learn, all right? The intent behind it is not necessarily insidious. It's not mean. It's not evil. It's not ugly. It's just a case of when we're little, we want to get our own way and we find ways to get our own way, to get what we want. We find ways to manipulate. I like to describe a narcissist as an overgrown two-year-old. In this case, they are the overgrown two-year-old. What they've done is they've learned to refine their manipulation to a point where they will throw tantrums. Often when you see narcissistic rage or when there is a smear campaign or when there's just ugliness of any form coming out of a narcissist, if you take a step back and look at it like an outsider looking in and you don't have the emotion of it swirling around in you, you will see an overgrown two-year-old throwing a very ugly tantrum. And so what a narcissist does is because they know you, because they have gotten to know you really, really well, they know your buttons. They could be a boyfriend, spouse, girlfriend, mother, father, best friend, sister. It could be anyone in your life who has gotten to know something about you. What they do is they go places normal people won't go. They take advantage of your kindness and they hit you where you are triggered. They hit you where it hurts. They pick up your sore points and they will use that against you to get what they want. Many, many years ago, I was very, very young. I was a very new mom at the time. I had come from a struggling background. I had parents who were great parts of our lives. Finances were a huge thing and to such a degree that at times food was a huge thing. It was a gentleman or a co-worker that I had who was a single dad. He had two little children and he would often tell me how there was no money, couldn't afford to pay for things and I could really empathize with him and then what he would do is he'd take a step further and he'd say to me it's my weekend with the kids they're at home with their granny this weekend and no food and I don't know how to feed them and so I would just give him money his girlfriend gained a little bit of a conscience and she felt really, really bad. And so she let me know, actually, it wasn't going to the children. This was their weekend money. He would either take her out or he'd go out with his friends. They know where to get you. They get you to empathize with them through your sore points so that that connection, that bond that you have with them feels pretty special. In some cases, some people even said it feels like it's a sacred bond that you have because you get each other. Because nobody gets you like this person because they've been through the same thing as you. And so there is this strange connection that you seem to have and they use that connection against you. They will build you up just to break you down. And this chemical reaction that happens in your brain of the oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone, the building up, the oh my gosh, nobody gets me like you, and the breaking down, the abuse, the unkindness, the mean spirit, this whole concoction that plays round and round in your head causes a bond with each other especially if the high is particularly high. You're like, we can get that again. We're going to get to that place again. We're going to experience that again. And all the while, like a carrot in front of you, they're like, this is what you need to do for that to happen, for me to get to that place again with you. Another thing that they like to do is they mess up. They mess up so bad that there is no way out of it. All the evidence is there. They cannot speak their way out of it. Then what they do is they bring up this card of, oh my gosh, but this pain, you know, this pain that we share, this connection that we have, because you've been through what I've been through you know this thing that we have together it's because of that and they will use that childhood trauma as a get out of jail free card all right they will again work on your emotions work on your sympathy your empathy your kindness the goodness that you have inside of you they'll be like but I'm struggling I thought you loved me so often the word love calls in their mind you need to accept my abuse and it just doesn't work that way so those are some of the ways that a narcissist manipulates that is different to general manipulation that at times we have all been guilty of.